BC Hydro has a mega project underway in northeastern BC called the Site C Dam. This is a hydroelectric power plant that will generate 1100 megawatts of power when it comes operational in 2024. Now, for more information about this project, click here or follow the link below. British Columbia and our country have a rich history of power, hydroelectric power generation. And for more about that, we're going to start today with a history lesson. It began in the 1950s with the election of the Social Credit Party under Premier W.A.C. Bennett. Bennett was British Columbia's longest serving Premier and he won seven straight elections ruling for 20 years from 1952 until 1972. It was during W.A.C. Bennett's tenure that the Crown Corporation BC Hydro was created and Bennett's ambitious Two River policy was formulated. The Premier's Two River policy had led to massive economic developments along the Columbia and Peace Rivers in the 1960s. Bennett saw the massive potential in harnessing the power of the rivers and wanted new sources of electricity to power industrial development in the province and stimulate economic growth. But there was a problem. The Columbia River crosses our border with the United States and WAC Bennett would need to cut a deal with our American neighbors. For more on the treaty, we have a resident historian, John Robson. The Columbia River is a hydroelectric engineer's dream. It's got the largest flow by volume of any North American river into the Pacific, and its steep gradients make it perfect for hydro dams. The problem is it crosses an international border, and that requires an elaborate cooperative regime. The Americans have been developing power on the Columbia since the glory days of the New Deal. They even had folk singer Woody Guthrie write dozens of songs, including Roll on Columbia, which is now the official Washington State folk song. But it wasn't until 1961 that they signed a treaty with Canada that would get the benefits of flood control from dams on the Canadian side. This being Canada, of course, there was three more years of rhubarb sorting out federal provincial quarrels and also the problem that Canadians weren't allowed to export power in the 50s and 60s. Don't ask me why. But they finally did sort it out by 1964. It was a big boost to WAC Bennett's public power project and to the American side. And that's how the Columbia River Treaty was so critical to fully damming the Columbia. I've been granted access to drive across the dam here. And what's incredible about it is just the sheer size of the reservoir behind it, but also the front side of the dam. It's an earth filled dam. And it was one of the largest in the world, it still is. And it was certainly the largest in the world at the time when it was built. Being the first dam on the Peace River, the creation of a massive reservoir was needed. The plan called for the flooding of 350,000 acres of land, creating the largest freshwater body in the province today. It is the size of this reservoir that allowed for the addition of the smaller Peace Canyon power station, just a few kilometers downstream, and allows for the smaller reservoir for the new Site C project. Of course, the project was not without controversy. Flooding the 350,000 acres of land displaced people. In particular, the Seca Dene First Nations were cut off by the massive Williston Reservoir, which resulted in increased isolation and alienation. And as recently as October 2008, the Quadacha First Nation, another Aboriginal group residing in the area, reached a settlement with the BC government and BC Hydro over damages suffered during construction and operation of the dam and the lake. The settlement included $15 million in a lump sum payment and annual payments of $1.6 million. During its peak construction, the dam had nearly 3,500 workers from across the province and our nation working tirelessly to construct the mega project. This was a welcome change to a region of BC that had seen little to no economic development prior to w the WAC Bennett Dam. Construction also involved some 20 trade unions, but they were bound by 10-year contracts guaranteeing no job action, be it a strike or a lockout. This ensured the project would be built without significant labor delays. In total, 16 men lost their lives working on the project. Bennett's ambitious Two Rivers policy ended up yielding British Columbia with cheap renewable electricity for decades to come. And in fact, to this day, we benefit from some of the cheapest electrics, electricity prices in North America. And we can thank the vision and leadership of Premier Bennett for that. So with all this history, you must be thinking the Site C Dam is a no-brainer, right? Well, not so fast. Tune in next time when I feature some of the proponents and opponents of the Site C Dam project. For the Rebel.media, I'm Christopher Wilson. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update.
Want even more of The Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.